All right, now that we have those uh, different the scalar scene and the temperature monitor plot set up, we are ready to actually run our simulation. So I'm actually going to change the name of this scalar scene to be temperature um, because that's what it's representing is temperature. Now we're going to close the mesh scene and the geometry scene and we're going to click this little flag up here which is initialize solution. Um, that's going to basically set everything to the initial conditions which are defined in the continua node. So whatever your specific part, in this case we only have one part, but it could be multiple parts, whatever this part is, um, whatever its uh, initial conditions have been selected as here. The pressure is uh, zero pascals, um, the static temperature is 300 Kelvin, and the velocity is zero. So pressure and velocity aren't really, uh, aren't really, like they're not really important here. Um, especially pressure because we're only monitoring velocity and static te and the temperature profiles. But temperature is 300 Kelvin. If you wanted to start it hotter or colder, um, then you could do so. Recall that this inner cylinder is being heated to 370 Kelvin and the outer or the, I believe the top is being cooled to 300 Kelvin. So usually it's a good idea to initialize it somewhere in between there. So I'm actually going to set it at three. Well, we'll do right in between 335. Um, so if we hit initialize again, it should, well, we might need to clear the solution view. Well, let's hit initialize again. There we go, now it's at 335, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and run this simulation by clicking this running person. If you click this button, it'll do one iteration. Um, and when you start it, it, the residuals plot will pop up. And so this will also be another way to monitor how it's going. But as you see, it, it took one step iteration. And down here in the output window, you can see iteration one. Okay. And these are showing you all sorts of different residuals, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, temperature monitor plot also did one iteration. So we're going to hit run to do many iterations. So as you can see, the, the speed of how fast these iterations will go will depend on your computer. Um, power and how many cores you're running the simulation on, but um, you have, we have the simulation trying to reach a steady state. It's being heated in the middle, being cooled on the top, and you can see the temperature profile is somewhere in between 370 and um, 300, looking around 335, as would be expected. Um, now, let's look at our temperature monitor plot. As you can see, these values are kind of starting to converge to a single value for each of them, a max value, a minimum value, and an average value. And if you look at the residuals, um, they're also kind of starting to flatline. Now the residuals are kind of a, they use um, like statistics and uh, things to determine if your solution um, is kind of reasonable. If the residuals are too large, then it usually means that your mesh isn't fine enough or you have some other issue with your simulation, you're not, you're not modeling the physics correctly, like you chose laminar flow instead of turbulent flow. Now, usually a good place to shoot for to get um, a good simulation is to have your residuals under um, 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. That's here. Um, unfortunately, because our mesh is too coarse, most likely, um, the residuals are, are above that. But again, this is a very basic model, so we're not going to worry too much about that. This is just showing you the idea, um, not necessarily showing a perfect model. So we see our temperature. It's um, kind of getting to a steady state. We look at our temperature monitor plot, and these values have really flatlined. You notice there's a little bit of variance up here and down here where it's bouncing around a value. This is because of the natural convection that's occurring in the model. So don't expect to get a perfectly, um, I guess, a, a perfect singular temperature. Like you see that it's still changing a little bit. Um, but but not a lot. The temperature here, um, if you look at these values, they're changing by hundredths of of a degree. So this is this is looking like it's it's getting to be converged. So um, we're gonna stop the video here, and then in our next video, we'll go over some of the post processing things.